society today has some interesting views about what success is and what it isn't. For instance, thinking that a stay-at-home dad is somehow contributing less to society than a CEO of a large organisation. Or that our paycheck is somehow an indicator of how successful we must be. I want to share with you a concept that this type of narrow-minded, comparative thinking pushes us into a race that we can never win. That this type of thinking destroys confidence and potential. I want to share with you what I learnt while I was on a race that I couldn't win. So what do I mean by the race? The race is what we enter into when we're pursuing things that we believe are going to make us look and feel more important, more valued and successful. And we all know we're on this race because we're constantly looking around to see where we are in comparison to others. I remember when I was about 12 years old and I had this incredible desire to own a pair of Nikes. And growing up in a single parent household meant shoes for my brothers and I were Kmart specials. And we get teased for wearing them. But I wasn't copping that. So I made a decision. I was going to buy my own Nikes. So I started washing cars and mowing lawns in my neighbourhood. And about 10 cars and lawns later, I had my Nikes. I can remember feeling sensational when I got them, thinking this achievement stuff is amazing. But it was the first genuine time in my life that I can remember feeling success, but it was also linked to competing and being that little bit better than everyone else. Little did I know the race for me had begun. And it wasn't long before the Nikes, the shine on the Nikes, started to rub off. And I felt myself impulsively moving to the next thing. And I remember about that age, it was NBA basketball cards or a new stereo for my room. Whatever it was, it was about looking and feeling more important. And I think it was at that time that I started to realise that I was in a race that I couldn't win, in hindsight anyway. But a few decades passed and I started to put myself in the wrong race over and over again. I was pursuing certain goals not because they were meaningful to me, but they were meaningful to winning. So why is it that some of us get confused with success by the acquisition of things? It might be a pair of Nikes, could be a promotion, a new car. Whatever it is, when we get it, we display it with pride and everyone around us thinks we've won too. And just as we wet our lips with the taste of victory, another desire pops up and we're captivated by the need to obtain more and win. It's addictive. So how do we let go of keeping up with others and find success by simply being ourselves? In his book, A New Earth, Eckhart Tolle sums it up brilliantly. He says that many people don't realise until they're on their deathbed and everything external has fallen away that no thing ever had anything to do with who they are. In the last moments of their life, when they're, they also realise that while they were looking throughout their lives for a more complete sense of self, what they were looking for, their being, had actually always been there, but had largely been obscured by their identification with things. This year, I turned 40, and I'm going to be a dad for the first time in January, and I am super excited. And I'm not sure whether every first-time dad spends the entire pregnancy reflecting on their childhood and their life choices, but I have. What type of dad will I be? Will my son or daughter be proud of me? What lessons will I share? Do I tell them about the time when I was about seven years old? And I thought it was a fantastic idea to run away from home, hide in my neighbour's boat until well after dark and the entire neighbourhood was looking for me. Probably shouldn't, but hey, what's the worst that could happen? But what, 
race do I want my son or daughter to be in? You see, I was barely 28 years of age when I was divorced and burnt out in my career. You see, the Nikes were chapter one, but the chapters in between consisted of an endless desire to earn and acquire. I climbed the corporate ladder quickly, and pretty soon I'd achieved everything on my list. And in my mind, all of these things were going to make me look and feel important, giving me a sense that I had won by desiring the things that I so-called wanted and went without growing up. But the race you can't win had worn me out. And I suddenly realised I hadn't actually asked myself the question. What did I really want for myself and why? What was it that lit me up inside, that brought me fulfilment and joy? What race did I want to be in regardless of the outcome? And when everything fell apart, I linked it to not being good enough, not being deserving enough. And I felt like an imposter because all of my self-worth was tied to the things that weren't there anymore. And around about this time, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. And after a couple of months of coming to terms with that, I reached out for professional help. And let me tell you, that decision changed the course of my life. I knew what I was going through, I could not navigate on my own. And at that point, it was so difficult to see how I could possibly find success again, which for me included falling in love and having a family. But I'm a slow learner, and it wasn't long before I started repeating the same old habits. I was comparing again. I was looking up the corporate ladder at others, especially those around my age that appeared to be more successful than me. I was frustrated. Why wasn't I where they were yet? Which reinforced my depression, my negative self-talk, which focused on everything I didn't have. And worthiness or building worthiness doesn't just happen. I gradually realized that it's about being true to yourself, living your values, and being accountable. And during this time, there were a number of books that I read, but one author in particular resonated with me. Her name is Brene Brown, and she's a shame researcher. And she describes comparison as one of shame's sidekicks. And to keep comparison in check for her, what she does is she constantly reminds herself to stay in her own lane, that comparison kills creativity. And if what's going on for us is a comparison broken record in our mind, that we should remember to talk to ourselves like someone we genuinely love. And we should reach out to someone that has earned the right to hear our story and has the capacity to respond with empathy. But as I said earlier, old habits are hard to break and letting go of comparison isn't just a switch you can turn off. For some of us, it takes constant focus. Trust me, I know. In another book of Brene's called The Gifts of Imperfection, she describes creativity as an expression of our originality and a reminder that what we bring to the world is completely original and can't be compared. So without comparison, concepts like ahead, behind, best or worst lose their meaning. Now let me be clear, I'm not suggesting for a moment that we should all just stop trying. I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't look for opportunities to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. That's where the learning is. I'm suggesting that whatever we pursue, we do it because it's meaningful to us. And regardless of the ups and downs, when things go wrong, which they inevitably will, it won't derail us because our self-worth doesn't depend on it. We do it because it brings us joy and fulfilment regardless of the outcome.
Success for me now is about mastering lots of things before I die. I love solving problems, which is why I run my own leadership training business today. We get to help businesses solve problems every day. It is amazing. But there are a few things that I remind myself of when I'm going after certain goals now. The first question is, is why am I going after it? But more than that, is it going to light me up? Bring me fulfillment and joy? And for whatever reason, I can't quite get there this time around. Yes, I'll be massively disappointed, but I'll still be a whole person without it. And I would have learned something along the way, which is going to get me there closer next time. And the other really important part is, do my goals align to my values? And above all of my goals are my values. But they're more than just words. They're what they genuinely mean to me. And what I'm going to do every single day to make sure that I'm living them. And these things have helped to keep me in a race that I can win and not get into my old habits. But I must admit, I'm not the most patient man in the world, and my wife can attest to that. And I've always kept front of mind to recognize incremental gradual improvements so that I'm not getting too far ahead of myself and keeping things into perspective. But one of the things that I'm most proud of, despite all of my struggles, I didn't give up. Even in the darkest of days, when I had no clue on the answers, I found a way to keep going. So with my son or daughter joining my wife and I in January, on top of instilling them with a never give up attitude, what we will be encouraging them to pursue will be that success isn't about career achievement or having the most toys. It's about being humble enough to learn about yourself and brave enough to be true to it. I'm now in my own race and I'm absolutely enjoying the ride. So ask yourself the question, what race are you in and why? Thank you.